So in the previous video, we were discussing how you can take an analog signal and convert that into a digital signal using sampling. So in this video, I'd like to continue talking about that idea and some of the constraints that come along with sampling, such as the Nyquist frequency. But before I talk about Nyquist, I'd like to just take another few minutes to talk a bit more about some ideas surrounding sampling. So down here, I have a table with 10 sample numbers and 10 corresponding sample values. So you might think that with this information, we can reconstruct this signal. But there's one thing missing. We still need to know the sample rate or the sample frequency, which is often denoted as f of s, or the sampling frequency. So this is simply the amount of times that we sample per second. So if I was to tell you that this table was sampled at 10 hertz, and that at this point on the graph is one second, so now that we know that there's 10 samples in a second, so this data in the table lasts one second, each sample is a tenth of a second, now we have enough information to replot this signal. So let's start with this zero, the first sample, go to the first slot on our graph and plot zero, and then move to the next point and plot a one, and then just plot all the points in our table all the way around when we get to the end, we've accurately reconstructed this signal. So knowing the sample rate and the sample values of any digital signal allows us to reconstruct that signal exactly as it was intended. But now looking at this signal, we can see in between these sample points there's a lot of empty space. Now this is space where we don't know what the actual value of the analog signal was. We only know the values where we sampled. So we have to interpolate between our sample points to try to figure out what the actual signal was doing. But now what happens if between this point and this point, the signal was doing this? So we can see our two sample points are in the exact correct place. But if we interpolated between the two, we would get something like that which is very wrong. So one way we might be able to fix this problem is to just sample at a higher rate. So by doing that, maybe we have another sample point in between these two red points, which is maybe here. Now if we interpolated between our new sample points, we would have something that looked like that. Now that is still not quite right, but it's a lot better than this interpolation here. And if we sampled at an even higher rate, we'd get even more accuracy. So we can see here that sampling at a higher frequency gives us higher accuracy on the signal. So this would lead us to asking, why don't we just sample all signals at the highest frequency we can? And the simple answer to that is, sampling takes energy. And if we don't need extreme accuracy on the signal, we don't need to use that energy. It's inefficient. We want to be as efficient as possible. So in some cases, we don't need to know all of the accurate, accurate characteristics of the signal. Maybe we only need to know, is the signal moving upwards? Is the sig signal moving downwards? Is the signal high? Is the signal low? And we don't need the accuracy that we need on, say, for example, music. So this would lead us to asking a similar question, which is what's the lowest possible frequency that we can sample at to still reliably reconstruct our signal? So this is where the work of Nyquist comes in. Nyquist, along with another man called Shannon, did a lot of work figuring out what the minimum sample frequency is to reliably reconstruct a signal. And the conclusion that they came up with 
is the f of s, our sampling frequency, has to be greater than 2 times the highest frequency in the signal. So looking at this straight away, there's two things that we need to think about. One is reliably reconstruct the signal. What does that mean? So that does not mean that we have an extremely accurate representation of the signal. It follows every little move that the analog signal does. That's not what we mean by reliable. What we mean by reliable is that if the signal is moving upwards, our samples are moving upwards. If the signal is moving downwards, our samples are moving downwards on a very broad scale so that we have the rough characteristics of what the signal's doing. We're not ever going to be told that the signal's moving upwards with our samples when the signal is actually moving downwards. That's what we mean by reliable. And the highest frequency just means the highest frequency component within the signal. So that could be maybe you're working on a communications project and you're told you have to work within a specific bandwidth. So that's your highest frequency, your bandwidth. Or maybe you're working with a signal that you know to be the sum of a 10 hertz signal, a 50 hertz signal, and an, an 800 hertz signal. So in that case, your highest frequency is 800 hertz. So now knowing this information, let's just plot two periods of a signal and visually take a look at what's going on. So we can plot the two periods and just a divider here separating the two periods. So now if we were to sample, let's say, exactly the highest frequency, we have a 10 hertz signal and we're sampling it at 10 hertz. So that would mean we have one sample per period. So we'd have a sample here and a sample here and we interpolate between that and we just go straight here. So now here the signal's moving down, here the signal's moving up, but the whole time our signal is just doing the same thing. So that's not reliable by the definition that I just mentioned earlier. So now moving backwards, let's say we sample at exactly twice the highest frequency. So this inequality is the sampling frequency has to be greater than twice the highest frequency. So sampling at twice the highest frequency doesn't satisfy this. So let's take a look why. So maybe if we sample twice the highest frequency, so we've got a 10 hertz signal and we're sampling at 20 hertz, that means we've got two sample points per period. So maybe we sample here and here. And then on the next period we sample here and here. So now we interpolate between these and we've just got a straight line. And again, signals moving up, signals moving down, our signal not changing. So this is not reliable either. So we cannot sample it exactly twice the highest frequency. So now let's think about what would happen if we sampled three times per period or three times the frequency. So we sample here, we sample here, and we sample here. And then again on this period. Now we interpolate between these signals, or these samples, sorry, and we get something that looks like this. So now here, signals moving up, our samples moving up. Signals moving down, our samples moving down. So now we have a reliable reconstruction of this signal. And that's why Nyquist says that the sampling frequency has to be greater than twice the highest frequency. And if it is, then we can ensure that we will reliably reconstruct any digital signal.